Today we're going to be going over dimensional analysis where more than one set of parentheses is required. Before we start, I wanted to go over the reason why we're using conversion factors and why conversion factors don't change the quantity. They only change the units. And the reason for this is the identity property. The identity property states that any number multiplied by 1 produces that same number. Therefore, if you have 1 times the value of x, you are going to get a product of x. If you rearrange these variables, then you will have x over x is equal to 1. And this is exactly how we situate those conversion factors. Any conversion factor is a set of equivalent measurements. Therefore, if you place an equivalent measurement and divide it by another equivalent measurement to that first measurement, then you will have one. This is why the quantity never changes. So the next question I have for you is, how do you know how to set up a conversion factor? Any conversion factor can be written in two ways. For example, 100 meters over 1 kilometer can also be written as 1, kilometers, one kilometer over 1,000 meters, and they both equal 1. The units define which of the variables are going to go on top and which one is going to go on the bottom. So just remember, what you're looking for is always going to be on top of the fraction, and what you are given is going to go on the bottom of the fraction. All right, our practice problem number one is as follows. Estimate the average number of gallons of gasoline consumed in the U.S. per year as a result of driving. The average car is driven 10,000 miles per year. The average mileage rate is 25 miles to the gallon. There are 280 million registered vehicles in the U.S. Now, the two conversion factors that you're working with are 10,000 miles is equal to one car, and 25 miles is equal to one gallon. Therefore, your starting value is 280 million registered vehicles. You also know that you are going to have to convert this quantity twice. So you are going to set up two parentheses. You also know that you have to end up with gallons. So you have to set up the units so that the only unit left is gallons. This means that because your first variable contains the unit car, the first set of parentheses has to have car in the denominator spot so that it cancels out with that unit. This means that the first conversion factor you are using is 1 or 10,000 miles is equal to 1 car. So you are placing miles in the numerator spot of that first set of parentheses. So in the second set of parentheses, your goal is to cancel out mile because car has already been canceled out. That means that miles needs to be placed at the bottom in the second set of parentheses. And gallons, because that is the unit that we want to be left with, goes on the top of the second parentheses. In the second step, or in the third step, I should say, we fill in the corresponding values uh, to each of the units. So now the problem reads 280 million cars times the quantity of 10,000 miles per one car times the quantity of one gallon per 25 miles. In the next step, I'm going to make sure that the units cancel. So cars cancels out with cars. Miles cancels out with miles, and we're left with gallons. In my calculator, I'm going to type 280 million 
times 10,000 divided by 25. Remember, if the 1 is on the bottom, I'm going to multiply. If the 1's on top, then I'm going to divide. My answer is 112 trillion gallons. Now, the very first value that I placed has two significant figures, right? There's no decimal point, so all of these zeros do not, count, do not count as significant figures. The only ones that count are the 2 and the 8. So I need to round this 112 trillion to two significant figures. So my answer is 110 trillion gallons. Practice problem two. The June bug lives a short life in which it reaches speeds of up to 10 kilometers per hour. How many yards per hour is this? My conversion factor for yards to, mo or to meters is 1.094 yards is equal to one meter. Now, there's no direct conversion for kilometers to yards, so I need to set up two parentheses. My starting value is 10 kilometers per hour, which is a speed. So I write down the given and I set up the two parentheses. Next, I look at my conversions and I figure out how I'm going to place the units so that the only thing that I'm left with is yards per hour. Now the hours do not change so I can focus on the kilometers. Therefore, the kilometer needs to change to meter in the first set of parentheses. Because kilometer in my given value is in the numerator spot, in that first set of parentheses I need to place kilometers in the denominators so they cancel out. I can convert kilometers to meters and I can convert meters to yards. Therefore, my middle unit will be meters. Meters goes on top of the first set of parentheses. But the question is not asking for meters, it's asking for yards, so I need to cancel out the meters. I do this by placing meters at the bottom of the second parentheses. And I want to be left with yards, so those units go on top of my second and last parentheses. In the second step, or in the third step, <laughs> I look at the conversion values and I fill in the values for each of the units. So now my problem reads 10 kilometers per hour times the quantity of 1000 meters per one kilometer times the quantity of 1.094 yards per one meter. Now remember, when the one is on the bottom, I multiply. When the one is on top, I divide. Therefore, in my calculator, I will type 10 times 1,000 times 1.094. My answer in the calculator is 10,940 yards per hour. But 10 kilometers per hour, which was my given value, only has one significant figure. So I have to round that 10,940 to one significant figure. So my actual answer is 10,000 yards per hour. Practice problem three. How many minutes are there in four weeks? This time we have three sets of conversion factors. So we will need three sets of parentheses. And I start with the value of four weeks. So this is how I'm setting up my problem, four weeks and then three parentheses. Now the problem is asking for minutes. So notice that minutes are at the top of my last parentheses. And I was given weeks. So in my first parentheses, I must place weeks at the bottom so that it cancels out with the given weeks. And of my conversion factors, the one that contains weeks is the first one. One week is equal to seven days. 
So seven days is going to go on top of that first parentheses. And then I am not asked. I am not asked for days, so I have to cancel out the days. Therefore, in the middle parentheses, I'm going to place days on the bottom. And of my conversion factors, the ones that the one that includes days but does not include weeks is one day equals 24 hours. So hours is going to go on top of that middle parentheses. And the problem is not asking for hours, it's asking for minutes. So my last conversion factor one hour is equal to 60 minutes, that will be placed in the last parentheses. Hours is on the bottom of the last parentheses. Therefore, in the next step, I fill in the corresponding numbers for each of the units. And then in my calculator, I type in 4 times 7 times 24 times 60. Notice there's a 1 at the bottom of every fraction. That is why I'm multiplying. My answer in the calculator is 40,320 minutes, but there's only one significant figure in four weeks. Therefore, I round to one significant figure and my answer is 40,000 minutes. Practice problem four. You're in charge of buying pizzas for a party. There will be 25 guests. The average person consumes three pizza slices. You call Pizzos and learn that their Angelo pie is $19 and that each pie is cut into eight slices. You have $150. Will this be enough? Very well, we are going to start with 25 guests and we're going to need three conversions. So we set up three parentheses. And then to situate the units, what I have to think about is what is the problem asking me? It's asking me if $150 is enough. That means I have to calculate the amount of dollars required to purchase enough pizzas for 25 guests. Therefore, in the last set of parentheses, I'm placing dollars on top. I also know that I start with guests. So that means in the first set of parentheses, I'm placing guests on the bottom. So it cancels out with the given. And for each guest, I am assuming that they will consume three slices. So slices goes on top. In the middle parentheses, I am putting slices on the bottom because I have to cancel it out. And I've asked. Uh, pizzos and they told me that each pie has eight slices. So I will put a one on top for that pie. And then finally, I know how much each pie is costing me. So I will be able to fill in the price for each pie. So now my problem reads as follows. 25 guests times the quantity of three slices per one guest times the quantity of one pie Per eight, or per 8 slices times the quantity of $19 per pie. In the calculator, I am going to type 25 times 3 divided by 8 times 19. My calculator answer is $178.125. But I was given two significant figures in the number 25. So I need to round that 170.125 to 2. Therefore, my final answer is $180. And I have calculated that I do not have enough money by just having $150.